Let me take you on a quick walk through how we see the SETS experience evolving. I know many of you have tried it out, but I want to give you sort of the full picture. So as you'll see here, we're going to start in a Word document, where here I am, someone putting together a rainfall report. And of course, one of the first things that I'm going to see is a web link that might be in my document, or it might be research that I'm doing related to my, my Word document. So here I am, I'm reading along on the web, and of course I'm interested in other articles. And what starts to happen as I get going is more and more things will open up. Now I'm curious. How many of you right now have 12 or more tabs open in your web browser? Yes. Have 15 or more? 20 or? Yes, a lot. And the problem is that those tabs in your web browser, they're off in a different area, not in a way that's related to the work that you're doing, and not in a way that's remembered and restored later. So that's one of the key ideas of sets here. The second thing that we're trying to do is to try to help people start the next part of their task. So you'll see here, when I click the plus, we get a new tab page that's optimized around this organization and these people getting things done. It's, a, it's branded Contoso, and because Contoso is an Office 365 shop, it's customized with Office 365 data about documents and things that I, as a user, am working on, or things my work group is working on. And furthermore, Contoso has deployed Bing at work, and with the Office service, the search experience within that new tab page is smart. So if I'm looking for an Excel spreadsheet with precipitation data that's relevant to the Word document I'm writing, I can get it incredibly quickly and easy, easily through a simple search, again, keeping these related things together. Now, we've rolled this out, and we have a number of people who've been testing it, and we're starting to get feedback. And one of the things that's pretty interesting, and probably some of you have experienced this, is when this content comes together, it starts to change the way you think about switching between things. And so one of the things that we've worked on is Alt-Tab. So imagine I'm going between web content and app content, and I hit Alt-Tab, and there's this funny thing. And I'm, I'm curious how many of you can relate to the following idea. You're working on a website, you do a bunch of stuff in the website, you open a tab, you go to another website, you switch between browser tabs, and then you hit Alt-Tab to go back to a previous website, but the web tab is not there. Yes? Anyone? Okay, the next insider build you get will take web content and put your recent web tabs right at your fingertips in Alt-Tab. So you get this automatic muscle memory feeling of switching back to the last thing, regardless of whether it's web or app. And yes, I, thank you. I can see some of you clapping for that. Uh, I've been trying this out. And let me tell you, all those moments where you go, oh, oh it's not there. Finally, that gets a little smoother. And it's one of the ways that the Insider program has helped us come to a good understanding about which problems to go after. So in this case, I'm going to finally lift my thumb off the Alt button, switch back to my Word document. And so the act of switching between things remains smooth with sets. But probably the biggest payoff, and this is the comment that Kevin made in that video, it happens when you close a set, and maybe a week goes by, or even a month goes by, and you want to pick up where you left off with a combination of things. Because sets are stored in the Microsoft Graph, and therefore they're cross-device, we have a memory of which things you are doing together in combination. It's literally what Kevin asked for. I wish the computer could remember the combination. So here, when I reopen my Word document, we prompt and say you had three tabs open last time. You can see what they all are, and with one click, you're right back to where you left off. It's the combination of things that the computer remembers. Of course, since this is stored in the graph, sets has a relationship to timeline. And so one of the other things you'll see coming to our insider builds is support for sets in the timeline. So here in the upper left, you'll see the set I was just working on. That's my rainfall report. And you can see that there's three tabs there. I could flip between them if I want. But over here, I also want to point out a second set. This is our Contoso expense reporting app as part of a set. And here you can see 
All the Contoso IT department, Contoso developers needed to do was register their activities with the Microsoft Graph, and then that app could be restored as part of a set as well. So you can see here's a meaningful set. I've got the expense report I'm working on, our company's guidelines for expense reporting, and some receipt images that I dragged to my PC from my phone. So, now is the time for all of you to be thinking about how you incorporate sets into your applications. And there are a few key things that are happening now. Um, I want you all to be installing these insider builds and giving us feedback. We've been getting positive feedback, but we've also been learning about glitches and bumps and things we need to improve, and we need more of that, and we need it as it relates to your apps. There are a whole bunch of improvements and things underway. I talked about some of them. And I know this begs the question for all of you, when will sets be available? Here's the answer. When we think that it is great. And so in the past, we've come up here at Build and showed new features. And sometimes people assume that means they're imminently available. I just want to be really clear. Sets requires Office and your applications and our whole ecosystem to work smoothly together. And we're going to make sure we take the time to do that right so all our customers have a great experience.